Hey what's going on guys, Fitz here and welcome to another Torchlight 3 video. Today I'll share my build for the Railmaster class using the Flaming Destroyer Relic. I like to call this build the Hellfire Railmaster. I played this build entirely on the highest difficulty called Ridiculous, so this will work on any difficulty that you prefer. This build is for the full version of Torchlight 3 not the early access. So without further ado, let's get into it. The Hellfire Railmaster will burn and melt down enemies, including uniques and bosses. This is more of an in-your-face character. I like to get up close to the enemy and burn them. Although we only have one melee attack skill, I still consider this a melee build. Here's how I will discuss this build. Timestamps will be in the video description if you want to jump to a specific subject. First, I will show all the skills for this build, then I will discuss and demonstrate how they work. There are detailed descriptions of all the skills in-game if you want specific information. I will show and explain how I set up my skill bar or hotkeys. I'll recommend what skills to choose when leveling up. I'll also show the legendarium, my current items, and ideal items. And lastly, I'll do a full Fazir's dungeon run to showcase the build. There's a lot to show you today, so let's go. You will have a total of 70 skill points once you reach the maximum level, which is level 60. These are all the skills that I have learned. Keep in mind that I am using 3 pieces of the legendary cosmic set to get plus 2 points to the entire conductor skill tree and plus 2 points to the entire slammer skill tree. You can equip the set items or slot them in your legendarium. You can pause the video if you need more time to look at the skills distribution. For leveling up, these are the skills I selected early on. You can adjust it to your preference and liking. By level 15, you will start to feel that your character is getting stronger. And by level 20, you will most likely just demolish whatever is in your way. For levels 21 and above, it's just a matter of preference. For me, I max the flamethrower car first, followed by cloak of flames and then summoning smash. And this is how I set up my skill bar or shortcut keys when I'm playing my Hellfire Railmaster. I prefer to have the keys that I use often closer to each other. If you want to change the shortcut keys, just go to the options menu, then key bindings. Now let's take a look at the skills that I have selected. I'll briefly explain the skills then demonstrate using the training dummy. Let's open the skill tree for the conductor. Build train. Now this lets you build a train. And this is the very first skill that you will have when you're level 1 and you're just starting the game. This is the only skill that will be on your skill bar plus the basic attack. So basically this lets you build a train. The train will follow you around and will passively attack enemies. So you don't have to activate it to attack enemies. Alright, so let's try it here. So let's build a train. Okay, now when you need to move around or walk a bit so that it will build the other cars. So for my train, I have the main turret, the shotgun, and the flamethrower. You can have a different cars depending on what skills you selected. So, if I move around, the train will follow me and it will constantly attack enemies that gets within range. While it's moving around, you actually regenerate endurance slower. So, sometimes it's better to have it stay in one place. Let's say for example, this is the enemy you want it to attack. Then you can just press the build train again. It will basically stop here, or position here, stay here. Then it will keep attacking the enemy that gets within its range. And while you do other stuff, 
basically get other enemies or attack other enemies now this is one of our relic energy regenerator so it, as long as it damages enemies it will help regen your relic energy let's move on to the next one shotgun car so if you activate it it will shoot a single large slug that pierces enemies for 300 8% weapon damage. Now it will also passively attack enemies. It will periodically fire a large blast of fire that hits a small area for 77 weapon damage. Now this is also one of our relic energy generator. Since it passively attacks enemies, you don't have to activate it. Then it will help regenerate your relic energy. You can activate the skill if you want it to shoot a much stronger and larger blast okay now endurance bonus let's try this here so basically endurance bonus is when you have full endurance and when you activate the skill it will activate the endurance bonus let's try it here on the shotgun car okay let's build our endurance first Basically, we'll just attack the training dummy. Okay, now that our endurance is full, let's fire the shotgun car here. So basically, you just need to point your mouse to the target. If your mouse is pointing here, then it will fire here. So let's recharge it again. All right, now it's full. So let's wait until it's done. Poor training dummy. Okay, let's fire the slug. Now, this is the endurance bonus for this particular car, which is the shotgun car. Basically, it's an overloaded car now. So this will fire its active skill instead of its normal attack for the next five attacks. All right, now the next one is shocking rounds. Now it's not here on the skill bar. We don't have enough skill bar, unfortunately, to put all our active skills. But this is just an additional relic energy generator. So basically your lead car, the first one, will fire electrified rounds that arc to one enemy. So the damage is just very minimal, but we want it to keep attacking enemies. So our relic energy will regenerate faster. Now, since I have the tier one bonus, so it will bounce one more time. Again, helping recharge our relic energy. The last skill in the conductor skill tree that we want is the flamethrower car. Since we're using the flaming destroyer relic, then it's just rightfully so that we use the flamethrower car. So basically, this is the last car in our train setup. And passively, it will fire a flamethrower for 44% weapon damage for 2 seconds. So basically, it will burn the enemies constantly. Now, when you activate it, it will fire a wide blast cone of flame that deals 421% weapon damage. Now, if you don't want to max this, max this skill out, at least get it to tier 2 bonus because tier 2 is relic energy charge rate. Again, you want the relic energy to charge faster so we can use our big skills later on. So tier 1 bonus is the flamethrower passive attack speed. And it's very good because it will keep firing so it will regenerate our relic energy faster now the last bonus is very good because the flamethrower will now fire eight fireballs that deal the skills current weapon damage which is 421 percent weapon damage in our case so let's try it on our training dummy okay so this is our flamethrower let's just point our mouse here Okay, see how many attacks it had. 
Okay, the other effects are because of my other passive skill tree. Now let's fire it with a full endurance bonus. Okay, now we have this bonus overloaded flamethrower. Again, for the next four attacks, the flamethrower car will fire its active skill instead of its normal attack. So basically, it's really powerful. Now that we're done with the conductor skill tree, let's move on with the flaming destroyer skill tree. So since we use the fire or flaming destroyer relic, this is the additional skill tree that we have. The first one is the ignition source is a passive skill and it will give you a chance to burn enemies for 50% weapon damage for 3 seconds. You also gain 12.5 evasion chance. The evasion chance is really nice but what you want here is the burn chance and it's a passive skill so it's very good. And the next skill is called the magma burst. Another passive skill that when you kill a burning enemy there is a 20% chance if you have it on level 5 that they will explode. Or even if they don't die but when you critically hit them, there's a small 5% chance that they will explode. So both scenarios, it will deal 45% weapon damage. Next skill is Cloak of Flames. This is uh, what I would say our bread and butter. Basically it will envelope you with a Cloak of Flames that drains your relic energy and it will last until the relic energy is depleted. The ring of fire will burn enemies around you for 255.2% weapon damage per second as fire. And while the buff is active, you and nearby allies gain 25% more damage and gain 10% evasion. Now, I suggest that you max this skill out is really powerful and this is our bread and butter however if you want to focus on a different skill at least get it to tier 2 so you'll have a bigger radius for your cloak of flames and it uses less energy so basically it will stay on longer now the tier 3 bonus is really powerful the skill when you have it activated will release a fireball randomly around you dealing your skills current weapon damage now let's try it on our training dummy so this is our relic skill so any enemies that gets within this area gets burned the additional sword fireball are from my other skills so basically you just move around and burn the enemies around you see the cloak of flame stays longer because it uses less energy now the next one is nimble flames so this is like our shield so surround yourself with dancing flames and blast enemies with three fire novas that deal 138% weapon damage as fire, granting you 40% evasion chance and creating additional fire novas on evasion. This will last for 6 seconds. So basically this is addition, an additional source of damage. When you activate it, it will fire fire novas and when you evade, it will create additional fire novas. The 40% evasion chance is nice. This is the maximum evasion chance that you can have. Basically, 40% is the cap. Alright, let's try it here. So, activate it. Look at all the fire novas. Now, obviously, this enemy isn't attacking as a training dummy. But when you're outside and someone is attacking you and then you evade their attack, it will create another fire nova. Alright, let's check out our evasion chance so currently i have 70 17 percent evasion let's activate the skill now i have 40 percent evasion all right the next skill is firestorm another passive skill 
and this is another source of damage when you hit a burning foe which you will hit them a lot because you are constantly burning them so basically it's considered hitting them like when you activate your cloak of flames you have the fire around you so when the enemy gets near then you are hitting them so every time you hit an enemy there is a 10 percent chance a flaming destroyer will drop a fireball onto them for 40 percent weapon damage if you have it at level 5 like mine there is an additional 50 50 percent fireball damage so 10 percent seems that it's small but since you're hitting the enemy a lot because they're they are burning every second and there are enemies around you then this will trigger often now one of our main guns is the summoning smash so call forth six massive flaming swords that crash down from above devastating enemies in the area for 1156 percent weapon damage as fire and for some reason if they survive they suffer an additional 1156 percent weapon damage for six seconds now you can only use this after you have consumed or used 200 relic energy so one relic energy bar is 100 so basically after you consume two of these then you can use the summoning smash all right now early on while you're leveling up at least get it to tier one because tier one bonus there's a five percent chance on hit to summon a single falling sword onto an enemy so basically you don't have to activate summoning smash to get this bonus you just have to keep attacking the enemy and in our case since we're constantly burning them every second means we're hitting them the five percent actually will be a lot bigger than what it actually says here now for tier 2 bonus the summoning smash once you activate it it will call down a hail of meteors dealing 40% weapon damage on hit and the last bonus is it drops a sword dealing skills current weapon damage onto a random target in range every second for five seconds so this is after you activate the skill summoning smash all right, let's try it on our training dummy again. So basically, we need to charge our relic, or this one, relic charge. Since we've used the skill earlier, consumed some relic energy, then this is almost fully charged. Okay, let's wait until our cloak of flames is done. Then we'll activate the skill. All right, flaming sword, meteors, some more flaming sword. Then keeps still getting damage even after we activate the skill. So the last skill that we want from the Flaming Destroyer skill tree is the Energizer. So basically it will just increase your Relic Energy charge rate. Now at level 5 it gives us an additional 25% increase in our Relic Energy charge rate. Since we're using Cloak of Flames often and this is one of our bread and butter, then this is very helpful. Now let's go to the slammer skill tree. We only have three skills that we want here. The first one is the blasting charge skill. So you throw out a blasting charge that deals 75% weapon damage and applies vulnerability, causing enemies hit to take 30% additional damage for six seconds. So basically I have it to tier two and then for the endurance bonus, you will throw three blasting charges covering a large area. The tier 1 bonus is 20% to vulnerability for blasting charge. Tier 2 bonus, which is really what we want here, is plus 20% damage reduction in melee combat. 
so basically you just throw the blasting charge and for six seconds the target will take an additional 30 percent damage the second skill that we want from the slammer skill tree is called the hammer spin this is our movement skill so basically you spin around with your hammer dealing 357 percent weapon damage as you pass through enemies and you knock them back so we use this as an escape mechanism but also we use this as an initiator or initiating skill if you use this with the endurance bonus then you gain all the charges of pound blasting charge and flying picks in our case we will gain charges for our blasting charge since we don't use the other two skills now i suggest you max this out because the bonuses are really good tier 1 bonus we get a 25 percent movement speed for six seconds after we cast it tier 2 bonus we get an additional 10 percent damage to relic skills which is summoning smash and cloak of flames and the tier 3 bonus is we get 50 percent damage reduction shield on cast for six seconds now since the cooldown is only eight seconds and i'll tell you why later on when we go into the items and the legendarium then we only have like two seconds without 50 percent damage reduction so basically you probably won't die ever unless you're not careful or it lags or something like that so let's try the hammer spin skill on our training dummy so as you can see I gain 50% damage reduction as well as 50% increase movement speed it's very helpful it's not just for escaping is it's also for initiating now the last skill that we want from the slammer skill tree is lantern flash use the powder embedded in your ancient lantern to burn enemies for 110 percent weapon damage so the enemy will burn for six seconds and if you use this while you have endurance bonus when the burn duration ends or the enemy dies they will explode for 220 percent weapon damage now you want to get it until tier 2 so that you'll get the additional 60% damage versus stunned, blinded, or slowed targets. So basically, in our case, it's blinded targets. Alright, let's move on to the Legendarium. Basically, you can customize it depending on what are the items that you get. If there's one thing that I would recommend that will always be here, it's the centrifugal demolisher so it's a two-handed hammer if you actually get a good roll for this item then you can equip it then you can remove this from your legendarium but basically this should stay here hammer spin deals an additional 25 percent more damage gains one additional charge and has a 25 percent lower cooldown now without this your hammer spin will have a 10 second cooldown and you will only have two charges okay for the other legendarium i have equipped the wide loads cave breaker so on hit which is what we're basically doing when the enemies are burning we have a 10 percent chance to drop stalactites dealing 30 percent weapon damage in an area again if you don't have the cosmic legendary items equipped then you can just put them here the second one wide loads cave breaker and the third one arc powered shoulders are optional so the third one when you cast summoning smash you become charged up for 15 seconds gaining 30 percent movement speed and dealing 100 percent weapon damage to or nearby enemies on hit so another good source of damage every time you cast our big gun all right now let's take a look at my current items so again as i mentioned earlier you need to equip 
three pieces of the cosmic set so you can equip the helm breastplate gauntlets the boots or the pants so just equip three of them so that you'll get the plus two to conductor skills and another plus two to slammer skills that's why I was able to get all those skills that I showed you earlier now if you don't have the level 60 version then you can just put them in your legendarium and you can go ahead and equip your blue items here now for the weapon the recommended or my ideal is a one hand weapon and then this shield or this focus but since i don't have a level 60 one hand weapon that is really good then i'm using this blue rare rifle it has 7000 damage so it's actually really powerful the skill that it has or the bonus that it has like plus three skill level shield car i don't even use it but since the damage is really high then i'm sticking to this one so this is let's say for example this is a level 60 weapon with high damage so i'm gonna equip it i'm gonna equip this shield let's say this is a level 60 shield then i'm gonna put this in my legendarium but let's say for example i have this one instead of this I'll put this in my legendarium and equip this so those are the stats now you can equip a full set of cosmic items if you have them they're very good so this build will become even more powerful once I get the items that I want now that you have seen the build it's time to put it to test I'm going to show you a complete Fazir's dungeon run just a quick reminder if you enjoy this video you can click the like button we do appreciate it and maybe consider subscribing thank you for watching and we'll see you next time Cast that spell here.